Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with homemade crispy chicken fingers with a tangy honey Dijon mustard dip, which I'll show in a different video. And I'll also be totally showing off my new Google Nexus One web phone, which everybody's talking about. And I got one. And I like it. I like it a lot. By the way, in the stressful life of a celebrity food blogger, you got to relax. So I spend about five minutes every day just tapping the water on this live wallpaper. Very cool. I also have to check the news. I got my widget up here set to food and cooking. Another day I'm not mentioned. That's okay. Now the other thing I love about my little Google sous chef here is the GPS navigation. I got to get to Japantown. Japantown, San Francisco? Because I need to find some panko breadcrumbs, which are the secret to this recipe. So there's Japantown. I'm going to hit navigate. It's going to give me voice guided GPS navigation in the car all the way there. Very cool. And speaking of GPS, there's an app on here called Aloka, which basically finds the closest whatever to you. For example, ATMs, pizza, gas station. Oh, look, there's one 300 yards away. So that's very convenient for a busy chef out and about. All right, we're back, and these are the panko breadcrumbs. Another cool app I have on the Nexus One is this barcode reader. So I can scan this panko because I might be able to get this cheaper somewhere if I buy it in bulk, and that will do a product search or a web search for that product code, and there you go. I can get reviews, I can find out where else I can buy it, I can get it in bulk, so forth. Anyway, a little glimpse into the tech side of Chef John's life here. So on to the chicken fingers. I'm going to take four chicken breasts. Don't buy strips. Cut breasts in strips. So much cheaper. So out of each breast, those are pretty large. I get like six fingers. It's not the length that matters with chicken fingers. It's the girth. They must be about the same size around to cook evenly. And then the other key to this recipe besides the panko is a very well seasoned flour. So I have flour, white pepper, chipotle pepper, salt, and garlic salt. Now all these exact measurements will be on food wishes as usual. So you want to put the spices in the flour and mix it really well. All right, it's about a cup of flour, and that's going to be perfect amount to coat these four chicken breasts. So just lump them all there. I know it looks kind of weird, but as long as you really move this around and really shake it around and really make sure they're all coated, you're in good shape. Look at that. That's some quality chicken flouring. All right, I'm going to take four eggs, one egg per breast, with a little splash of milk, whisk that up, and then coat the chicken strips, the floured chicken strips, in the egg. So once the chicken is coated with the egg, we are going to bread those three or four at a time in our panko breadcrumbs. This is the secret to this dish. Panko breadcrumbs are sharp and flaky, and they get really crispy when you fry them. So this is going to be great. Now, speaking of breading, it can be a little messy. So probably my favorite feature about the smartphone, the Nexus One, is this voice-activated search. What are panko breadcrumbs? Like if I need some panko information for the blog post, I can find that here. And sometimes, even though I only have one clean finger, something pops into my head that I just need to know. What is Bobby Flay's favorite color? And this is not just for search. You can use this to make phone calls, check your contacts, all that kind of stuff. Hey, Chipotle is not a color. Anyway, voice search and navigation, very cool when your hands are basically always dirty. Now, as we're breading our chicken, I'm going to set it out on this rack because once they're all breaded, I want it to sit for like 15 minutes just to dry the surface a little bit. It makes the crust kind of adhere. All right, and then the best part, time to fry these delicious fingers. I'm going to use about a half inch of oil in a cast iron skillet on medium high heat. And how do you know it's hot enough? Well, you don't unless you test something. So this is called the sacrificial nugget. You put it in there, and if it cooks and starts browning, you're good to go. If it just sits there, give it more time. All right, when the oil's hot, put in your chicken fingers. Cook them for two minutes per side until golden and crispy. Actually, make that two to three minutes per side. It's going to depend on how thick you cut them. So make sure they're cooked through. I'm going to do these in batches, obviously. I'm going to remove these to drain. And then you can eat immediately, or you can actually keep them in a warm oven, and they'll stay crispy for a surprisingly long time. And by the way, when I was done, I shot a little quick video with the Google Nexus One to show people how to double dip at a party without getting in trouble. I just shot it and uploaded it right straight to YouTube. So make sure you check for that video. Besides the video, this also has a 5 megapixel camera with flash to capture my, you know, dining adventures. And that's it. I hope you give that easy chicken finger recipe a try. Whether you have a smartphone to help you out or not, give it a try. It's really good. Stay tuned for the sauce. And also, I can't say too much right now because it's really secret, but I'm working on a couple Nexus One apps. The working names, G-Slice and G-Peel. You know what, I probably should have pixelated this for security purposes.
Oh well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Go to the site for more info. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.